In this video, we're going to talk about how you can protect your circuit from reverse polarity damage. So let's say you have your battery and it's connected to some device or load resistor. Let's call this device D. And let's say this is the correct way to connect it. So in this case, current is going to flow in the clockwise direction. But sometimes you can make a mistake. You can accidentally connect the device in the wrong way. And by doing so, you can cause damage to your circuit. So what we want to do is we want to find out how to protect the circuit just in case by accident we connect the battery to the circuit in the wrong way. One solution to this problem is the use of a diode. So let's say we connect the device to the battery in the appropriate way and there's a diode in this circuit. And let's use a germanium diode because the voltage drop is very small, it's only 0.3 volts. When the diode is forward bias, it will allow current to flow through the circuit into the device in the right direction, which is good. If we reverse the polarity, if we connect the battery in the wrong direction, the diode will not allow current to flow in this circuit because the diode is now in reverse bias mode. So therefore, the diode will be off. And on the left, it's on. So with the diode, if we connect the battery the appropriate way, the circuit will be on. If we connect it the wrong way, the circuit will be off. So that's one simple way in which you can protect your circuit from reverse polarity damage. Now granted, with the use of a diode, it could burn out if the current flowing through it is very high. So if you have a device that draws a lot of current, you need to take into account how much current the diode can handle. Some diodes can handle one amp of current, others can handle a current of 10 amps, and there are others that can handle 100 amps. So one way to prevent uh, burning out your diodes is to choose a diode that can handle a large amount of current. Or another option is to add a fuse to this circuit. By adding the fuse, if the current gets too high, the fuse is going to burn out thus protecting your diode from burning itself or damaging the circuit. So that's another option you could use. You can add a fuse uh, to the circuit to protect it from high current surges. But now, notice that the circuit is off if the battery is connected the wrong way, and the circuit is on when it's connected the appropriate way. Now, here is a question for you. Is there a way in which we can connect the circuit where it doesn't matter how we connect the battery, whether we connect it the right way or the wrong way, the direction of the current through the device will still be the same? Is there such a circuit that we can design to accomplish that? Well, it turns out that there is. In DC power supplies, it's known as the bridge rectifier circuit. So let's say we have our battery, and then we're going to use four diodes. We're going to use four germanium diodes to keep the voltage drop up to 0.6 volts. Each germanium diode drops the voltage to 0.3 volts. And so here is our device. And that is it. Now let's label our diodes D1, D2, D3, and D4. And let's call this point A, B, C, and D. So current is going to flow from the positive terminal of the battery to point A. And from point A, it's going to go through D1 because it's in forward bias mode. It can't go through D4 because that's in reverse bias mode. 
So D4 blocks the current from flowing from point A to point D. So it's going to flow from point B, and it's going to go through the device in this direction from top to bottom, and then it's going to continue to flow towards point D. Now, once it gets to point D, it's not going to go through D4 going back to A. Instead, it's going to go through D3 to point C, and then it's going to go back to the battery. So in the device, it's going from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. It's flowing in this direction. Now, let's see what happens if we reverse the polarity of the battery. Our goal is to make sure that the current flowing through the device continue to flow in the same direction. So let's change the polarity. So now the battery is connected in the other direction. So it's connected in the wrong way. Current is going to flow from the positive terminal of the battery to point C. Now once it reaches point C, D3 is going to prevent it from going to point D because that's in reverse bias mode, so D3 is off. It's going to flow from point C to point B through diode 2, so that diode is on. And then from point B, it's flowing in the same direction through the device. And then current will flow back to point D. It's not going to go through D3 because it's going to return you know, where it came from, which it doesn't want to do that. It wants to make it to the negative terminal. So instead, it's going to flow through D4 to point A back to the negative terminal. And so by having these four diodes set up the same way as in a, a four-wave bridge rectifier circuit, it doesn't matter how we connect the battery to the device. We can connect the battery the wrong way in a circuit, and the current flowing through the device will be the same. The only downside is the voltage drop of the diodes. Using a germanium diode, the voltage drop is 0.3 volts per diode. However, in this circuit, no matter how you connect the battery, the current will flow th through two of the four diodes. So the total voltage drop is going to be about 0.6 for the two germanium diodes. So if we have a 12 volt battery, then the voltage across the device is going to be 11.4. So that's the only downside we need to consider with this circuit. And if high current values are a problem, you can add a fuse in this circuit to prevent the circuit from damaging from high current surges. Or just use a diode that can handle a large amount of current. So that's how you can protect your circuit from reverse polarity.